Get everyone, today we'll be talking through some of the key functions of Power Query. We'll build a simple report in Power BI and I'll provide some helpful tips along the way. So let's get cracking. So the first step is to download Power BI Desktop and you can do this by accessing the link I've provided in the description below. And once you do that, you should land on this website here. Uh, click download, follow the prompts, and then you should be able to install it from there. All right, so after installing it, you should be able to open it up and click on the Get Data button up in the top left. Um, so this will allow you to connect to your data source, whatever that is. Uh, you can choose from a number of different data sources like Excel spreadsheets, CSV files. It could be databases such as Microsoft SQL Server and web sources such as data from a website's APIs. Uh, I'll select the web option and paste a link to some tennis data. Uh, so I'll be using a public CSV file here uh, based on all the ATP tennis matches that were played in 2015. After pasting this in, click OK to connect to your web data presented with the option of loading or transforming the data. In this case, we'll click transform, uh, but there are situations when you'd want to click load, uh, and this is when you're ready to bring the data directly into your report without making any changes to it. This option is good if you have some simple data sets or want to do some quick analysis. So now we're hopping over into Power Query, which is like the Swiss Army knife for data. So you can slice, dice, and transform your data in hundreds of ways. It's probably one of the most powerful tools in Power BI Desktop. Uh, and it can make your life so much easier when it comes to preparing for analysis. And one thing I love about Power Query is that it records all of your transformations that you apply to your data, which you can see on the right hand of the screen. Uh, this way you can quickly pinpoint any error messages or refresh values that might pop up along the way. But as helpful as those initial steps are, it's still important to go through each column manually to ensure that it has the right data type to remove any irrelevant columns. Um, doing this can improve the performance of your report by reducing the amount of data that needs to be processed. All right, for instance, let's have a look at the column tawny date. Now, this contains numbers which make Power Query automatically format this, but you can easily correct this mistake by manually changing the data type to date. When you do this, you'll see a pop up with two options, replace current or add new step. What this basically means is add new step creates a new applied step, which can be later modified or removed. All right, once you're happy with all the transformations you've made, you can simply close and apply them to your report. So now that we've loaded the data into the model, let's take a look at the data view tab. And so this is where you can make any changes to your data, like fixing any errors, formatting, or filtering out any unwanted rows. It's a great way to get a closer look at your data and make sure it's all in order before you start creating reports with it. As an example, let's say that the loser age column was actually a financial field and you wanted to show dollars instead. Well, you can easily make that change just by clicking over here and adjusting the column type. To add some text onto the page, there's a button that you can find under the home ribbon by clicking text box. Let's type in 2015 ATP matches. In there, let's make it stand out a bit by using bold font. To make this text box a little bit less bland, uh, we can add some background color. To do this, head over to the effects under general section. Let's go for a nice dark blue background with some white font, and that should give us a nice Australian Open style look. To start, we wanna figure out how many matches were played in 2015. Since we know that each row in our data represents a single match, we can get a quick snapshot of the total number of matches by checking the number of rows in the data view. And we can see that there are 2,943 rows indicating the number of matches that were played in 2015. Let's drop the tawny ID onto the page. And by default, it's showing us every single row in a large table, but we wanna see a count instead. Now, as we get into more complex dashboards, it's usually a good idea to create measures and functions around some of this. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about this, let me know in the comments below and I'll focus my attention on putting some of those types of videos out in the future. For now, let's make this a card so that we can easily see the 2,943 matches that have been played. Uh, if you want to view this over time, we can convert this to a line chart and drop in the date onto the x-axis. So now we can see the number of matches played at each point in time, but let's say we wanna see the total per month. So we can edit the date hierarchy to remove some of the unnecessary data from our visual. Now let's quickly add some data labels to our chart just so we can see the total number per month. So now we wanna see how many matches were played on each surface. So let's convert this to a stacked column chart and slot in the surface legend. So now we can see in January, 266 matches were played on hard services, um, which would be the Australian Open. Um, if you want, we can make it a little bit more visually appealing and we can adjust the column colors to match the surfaces more closely by formatting the visual. 
so we can click columns and adjust those ones. Let's make it easier to filter the data by adding a slicer. So a slicer is like a filter that you can add to your report, allowing you to select one or more values from a list to focus on specific data points. So this is great for making your report more interactive and user friendly. Uh, we'll add a slicer for different surfaces so that you can easily filter the data by surface type. And while we're at it, let's also add a slicer for the tournament name uh, so you can filter on the data further and focus on specific tournaments. And this will make it even easier to analyze the data and draw insights from it. So let's say you want to see the names of the players who won and how many games they've won. Um, so there are a couple of ways to do this, but let me show you a quick and easy way. We're going to do this by copy pasting the visual into the blank space. You can do this by right clicking copy then paste or control C, control V. So we'll first remove the surface from the legend and replace the dates with the player names. Then we'll go back up to the visualizations and change this to a clustered bar chart. So this type of chart groups bars together based on a categorical axis, making it easy for comparing the values of different categories side by side. For example, you could use this type of chart when comparing revenue against different products in a given period. But in this case, we're comparing tennis players and the number of games they've won. But we wanna make sure our titles and labels are clear and concise so that our dashboard is easy to read and understand. So let's make some minor tweaks to our titles and charts and clean it up a little bit. Let's go matches played by month and surface. And let's make this one matches won by player. So when we click a player's name in our report, it's highlighting all of the related data points in the chart on the left, which is cool, but it's not exactly what we want. So we actually want the other visuals to update based on the selected winner and filter this chart here, which is what's called a filter interaction. All right, lucky for us, we can fix this up by going to edit interactions up the top and hitting this button. And there we go. Now you can see the visuals filter out the data we want based on the selected winner. Now the amount of times in my day to day when I build a dashboard for people and they ask for the ability to extract some of the raw data directly from it, or they want to be able to select a couple of filters on the page and just download that set depending on what the type of report is. It's a pretty common request and luckily Power BI makes this very easy to do. So let's quickly add a table and the ability for users to export the data. So you can easily do this by dropping in the column names into the report, which we can either just drag them in and drop them in or just tick the boxes on the side. All right, so now this is something I see all the time when working with dates in Power BI. By default, it will show you this hierarchy which groups the data by year, quarter, month, and day. It can be pretty handy for quickly summarizing data, but in this case, we just wanna see the date without all the extra fluff. So we can do this easily by just clicking the drop down over here and selecting date to show only the dates that we need. All right, so let's give our table a little makeover. All right, so we'll increase the font size a little bit to make it easy to read and switch up the style to make it a little bit more modern. And while we're at it, let's tidy up those column headers. I know we only scratch the surface here. In the future, we'll be doing more advanced videos, including using drill throughs, measures, calculated columns, and just more advanced analytics. So feel free to sub if you're keen on this kind of content. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a good one. Cheers.